The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has called me to proclaim the gospel to the poor. People much beloved by God, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed is the one who delights in the law of the Lord. I got to tell you, this is one of my all-time favorite psalms. It's beautiful. It's a great start to a book full of wonders. Um, Luther said of the psalms that it's the most precious of the books in the Bible because contained within it is the entirety of Scripture in a miniature form. Think about that. The entirety of Scripture miniaturized, stuck within the middle of the Bible, proclaiming the glories of God. That's what the Psalms really are, is a chance to proclaim the glory of what God has done. We saw, all saw an example of the glory of what God has done over the weekend. If you saw the northern lights dancing over your house, it's something I thought I would never see, and something that I thought my colorblind father certainly wouldn't. We both got to watch it together, and that was incredible. But here... It sounds like David, or the psalmist, is talking about what we do. The glories of the man who obeys the law of God. Psalm 1 does a couple of things really well. It juxtaposes the wicked and the righteous, right? Um, There's a counsel of the wicked. They linger um, and they scoff. There are sinners that sit together that plot against the righteous. The wicked are like chaff, and the wind blows them away. The wicked will not stand in judgment, but not so for the righteous. Because they don't walk in the way of sinners, or sit in the counsel of the scoffers, or stand in the way of the wicked. Instead, their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on that law they meditate day and night. And they then become a tree like one that's planted by cool water, whose roots can reach into the ground and draw up what it needs. It sounds simple. It sounds like all we have to do is delight ourselves in the law of the Lord and avoid walking in the counsel of the wicked and avoid sitting in the seat of scoffers, and then we'll be righteous, and then we'll be good, and we will have earned our own salvation. Isn't that right? You're waiting for the punchline, right? That's not the case. We have a terrible understanding of what it means to be blessed, or blessed in this case. We want so badly to do something to earn that blessing. We look at the Beatitudes that Jesus spoke in Matthew 5, right? Blessed are the meek in spirit, for they shall inherit the kingdom, they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Blessed are, blessed are, blessed are, blessed are all the way down. Now our inclination is to take that and say, well, we ought to be meek and lowly. We ought to mourn. We ought to be peacemakers. No one wants to do that. Does anybody really want to go around mourning all the time? I mean, I know I look good in black, but do you? Don't you get tired of that after a while? What about being meek? The meek get run over. They get trampled on. What about the peacemakers? I had a teacher explain it to me one time. The reason that there are peacemakers is so that the meek can inherit the earth. Because the peacemakers are exactly what cult says they are. They're a gun. They're the ones that God uses to make peace in the world. They're the tough guys. And they're called sons of God for it. See, we want to become the things that Jesus is saying, but it kind of works the other way around. Greek is such a nicer language than English. You ever had a love-hate relationship with anything? I have a love-hate relationship with English. I'm kind of stuck speaking it because that's what everybody else speaks. And I was an English major when I was getting my associate's degree. But it is so imprecise sometimes. Whereas in Greek... You can put whatever words wherever you want them, and it makes sense. So nice. In the case of Jesus and the Beatitudes, what we really ought to be saying is the meek will be blessed because they will inherit the earth. 
peacemakers will be blessed because they will become sons of God. The man who does not walk in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of scoffers or stand in the counsel of the wicked will be blessed because he delights in the law of the Lord. The blessing is the chance to delight in the law of the Lord, to be kept out of those places, those circles of scoffers and wicked people. It's to exist in a place of love. This place. The place where your brothers and sisters in Christ are. Really? Don't believe me? Look at what Jesus said. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They are not of this world, just as I am not of this world. Sanctify them in your truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me to the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sake I consecrate myself, so that also they may be sanctified in truth. See, Jesus has brought us to this wonderful oneness. Think about the Apostles' Creed. We believe that God has called us through the gospel, enlightened us with his gift, and sanctified us. Sanctification isn't about what you do. It is about what God has done to you. It is about becoming a part of that tree that's planted by streams of water. Remember, before Jesus prayed this high priestly prayer, he said the word abide dozens of times. Abide in me. If you abide in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. He makes a similar metaphor to the tree of life. He says, I am the vine and you are the branches. Well, branches don't produce fruit on their own. You want proof of that? Go pick one up off the ground. Ask it to produce fruit. It doesn't do it. But the branch that abides in the tree that is part of the tree, that is the one that produces fruit. In Christ, you are blessed because you don't stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of scoffers or stand in the counsel of the wicked. Because that's not what this place is. That's not what your brothers and sisters in Christ are. In Christ, you are blessed because you are one of the people who delight in his law. What is the law of God? The word. And what is the word of God? Christ himself. You who delight in Christ are blessed because you are sanctified and kept in truth. It's not about what you do. It's not about how good you do it. It's not about being forced to do things. See, here we're free to do things for our neighbor. We're free to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. We're free from the obligations of the law, as I've said before. No one can force you to do good works. No one can tell you that you haven't done enough good works. Because who has the right to decide that except for God himself? And Jesus makes it pretty clear that he has consecrated himself to do the good work. Now Christ has, in his good work, become a tree. A nice, big, wooden tree. He's become the fruit of that tree. The fruit that is born for life and for you. He is planted by the rivers of life in heaven. By faith we are brought into the kingdom of God. By faith we are justified. And thanks be to God, by the same faith we are sanctified. There is no longer an obligation to do certain things. We are blessed because we are in Christ. It is Christ who calls us to love and Christ who loves us. Out of the overflow of what he has done, we are brought to love. Out of the overflow of what he has done, we are brought to righteousness. Out of the overflow of what Christ has done, we are called blessed. Amen.
Hello, I'm Victor Aaron Dawson, and I hope that you heard comfort, forgiveness, and the promises of Christ in this sermon. For more sermon videos like this, information about our church, and promises of Christ, you can visit us at sjlcmetro.com. That's sjlcmetro dot com. Thank you, and God bless you and keep you in his grace.